Welcome to step 9, Implement Access Control. We start with permissions. What are permissions? What an end user is allowed to do on the system depends upon the account used and what that account has been configured to allow the user to do. Most operating systems allow very granular control as to what a particular account is allowed to do. Configure accounts to allow users the access rights necessary to perform their job, but no more. This, if you recall, is the principle of least privilege. Access rights consist of an account's ability to access files and directories. If access is granted to a file, is the account allowed to change the file or only read it? If access is granted to a directory, is the account only allowed to read the contents of the directory or are they allowed to create new files in the directory, etc.? Creating these rights on a Linux or Windows OS is a very basic admin function. So we won't go into the specifics here. For ease of administration, assign rights to groups of accounts rather than to individual accounts. You should create groups of employees with a similar job function and then assign specific rights to the group. For example, all junior accountants will get a specific set of, of permissions while all senior account accountants will get a different and probably more permissive set of permissions. All admin assistants will get a specific set of permissions applicable to their job duties, etc. Remote access permissions need to be considered carefully. That is, if Huckleberry is allowed a specific set of permissions if he is sitting in the home office, is he allowed those very same permissions if he is sitting at home or if he's sitting in a hotel room or Starbucks? For ease of use, many companies will allow Huckleberry to have the same or similar permissions wherever they're physically located, but you should carefully consider the security implications to, prior to granting such permission. The reason why you would hesitate to grant the same permissions from a remote location than you would from your company location is that the security of the remote site is unknown. If you plan to allow an end user access from a potentially insecure lo location to data on your network, you should use a VPN. A VPN provides secure communication over an insecure public network. So what, what's going to happen is the data that goes back and forth will be encrypted. Now there are two types of VPNs, site-to-site -site VPNs and client-based VPNs. What we're talking about here is client-based VPNs. Here, a piece of software is installed on the end user's laptop. This allows the remote user to establish a VPN from his laptop to the security appliance that sits on your home network. The important thing to realize is that the VPN allows all data between the laptop and the remote network to be tunneled and therefore encrypted. So you don't really care if the local connection is secure or not, because even if the data could be sniffed by a black hat, he would not be able to decipher the encrypted data. Also, make sure that the VPN is enforced, meaning that the end user is unable to connect to the home office unless the data is, perfect, is protected by the VPN. That is the end of this lecture. Thank you very much for watching.